So hello everyone, I'm Jepu from UW Medicine. Uh, so today, uh, so uh, uh, I'm very happy to share our research about misinformation on uh, web search engines. So uh, we know that search engines today, you know, may potentially show show those harmful information to people. So it's like, uh, you know, uh, so it's like uh, what we showed on the screen. So starting from several years ago, search engines have already been to uh, trying to show help information if someone is searching for how to commit a suicide. So this is an, just an example about the helpful information that is easy to tell, but there are potentially some um, helpful information that is uh, harder to identify, like misinformation. So that's why uh, we particularly want to want to want to examine how how does the misinformation search results displayed on the search engines influence uh, our you know search engine users and particularly we will look into uh, three aspects about their influence so number one is about their search behavior and uh, number two is about how does the misinformation uh, search results affect people from learning uh, the factual information, and particularly how how do they affect people from learning the correct factual information from the search results? And uh, the last one is the perceived goodness of the system. So, uh, so, so here we we define the misinformation density as the proportion of the misinformation without among uh, you know divided by the total of the misinformation and correct information without displayed on the SERP. So for example, on the left side, so, so here you can see the, the blue cell are the correct information without and the, the pink ones are the misinformation search without. So if that's the case, the, the left search without ranking actually have a density of zero because all the display to relevant information are correct information ones. And uh, the, so the ranking on the rightmost side has a misinformation density of one because uh, both of them are pink. And uh, the one in the middle has a misinformation density of 0 0.5. So uh, you probably are wondering why this is important. So uh, number one, from the ranking perspectives. Uh, so it, it could be able to provide some guidance regarding uh, you know, whether we should really remove the misinformation without from search without ranking, and also how much removing misinformation search without will make an impact to our end users. And on the other hand, you know, by starting things like the search behaviors changes could be also be able to provide some signals to help the search engine companies design things like metrics to better understand, you know, uh, or identify the subs misinformation density level. Okay, so so here we we use a controlled user study uh, methods. So in general, what we did is that we created three. Uh, sorry, so we created three, uh, you know, uh, settings. So in general, we, we, we created three customized search engines to display different amounts of uh, misinformation density. So here, uh, we first created a text classifier to uh, predict whether a search engine result is a correct information or shows misinformation or shows not relevant information to a search query. And then uh, we manipulate the ranking of the search results, such as to manipulate the misinformation density showing on the SERP. So you can see that, uh, so the low misinformation density setting, we just uh, replace all the predicted uh, misinformation results with the correct ones while return the uh, non-relevant ones. So here we, we didn't control the or change the non-relevant result ranking. And also on the rightmost side, this is the high misinformation density setting. So we just uh, replace all the uh, you know uh, correct information without rank with the uh, you know misinformation without. And also we didn't change the relative ranking of the results. And in the case of the medium misinformation density setting, we just uh, create a balanced number of uh, you know correct information and misinformation search results on the SERP such as that, you know, we aim to achieve like 0 0.5 misinformation density here. And uh, again, here the misinformation density is uh, defined as the total number of uh, misinformation without divided by the total number of misinformation plus number of correct information ones. Okay, 
So, and uh, particularly for our user study, we created two simulated work tasks related to health information study. So you can see uh, these are the two tasks. One is about uh, aspirin, the other one is uh, uh, yeah, vitamin B12. And uh, particularly every time we show the participants with a description about the task. And also we show them a teaser uh, document for them to read. And this uh, teaser document is actually, a, or this a starting reading uh, document shows a misinformation article. So this is a trying to simulate the scenario that you know someone may read a misinformation uh, article shared by their friends on social media, and then they want to search for information to verify the correctness of the information. And particularly, we didn't tell them this is an article include misinformation. So that's why at the beginning they don't know actually whether uh, this article includes misinformation results or not. So uh, every user will start with uh, reading the article first and then doing search. And also our experiments use uh, uh, between subject design. So in general, we find 60 participants in total, all of them are college students and uh, each participant finishes the same two tasks. So uh, yeah, so these are the experiment settings. So in general, uh, one third of them completed like uh, in the low misinformation density setting and another 20% finish the two tasks in the medium misinformation density setting and the other 20 finish all of them in the high misinformation density setting. Okay, and so this is the process, experimental process for each of the uh, you know, participant to finish each task. So, uh, so as we said, we, we start by asking them to read a misinformation article. And uh, after that, we ask them to answer 10 factual questions. So here, the factual questions are something like what we showed in the example here. So in general, our factual questions are, are you know, uh, showing the participants a statement we extracted from the relevant articles. So this statement could be like a false statement or a correct statement. And then we ask the participants to rate uh, to what extent they agree with the information in the statement. So in general, for each of the tasks we created, so we prepared 10 factual questions like this. And then uh, we asked the same 10 questions once before they do the search. And once again, after they do the search to measure you know, uh, how the uh, perceptions uh, about the correctness of the statement changed during the search. So. Uh, and uh, after that, we ask them to actually do a search uh, for 10 minutes. So in general, first read a misinformation article and then answer the first, uh, answer the 10 factual questions once and then do a search for 10 minutes. And after that, uh, to answer the 10 factual questions again. And uh, finally, we ask them to, uh, you know, uh, to, to answer questions regarding the perceived goodness of the system. Okay, so these are some details about the the uh, systems. So in general, we so at the beginning we we want to actually uh, create a you know uh, you know general uh, misinformation density classifier. So later we find that you know this is a too challenging, but uh, instead uh, what is more actionable was actually to create a task dependent classifier. So here what we mean by task dependent classifier is that since we have uh, two such tasks. So that's why we can actually just create classifiers for misinformation specific to these two tasks. And then, you know, uh, this serves for all purposes. So in general, when we are preparing the training data for each of the tasks, we, we prepare like a 20 such queries ourselves. And then we manually judge about like 10 top, top 10 search results for each of the readouts. Yeah. And then we train a model to predict whether a search without is a correct one, misinformation one, or not relevant one. So uh, these are some of the results uh, showing you the effectiveness of the manipulation of the misinformation density here. So here on the left side, uh, this is showing the, so this chart is showing the percentage of the, uh, you know, uh, the, three, uh, the three types of, uh, without like misinformation one and correct information one and irrelevant one in a three settings. So here the darkest bar is the high misinformation density setting. 
and the yeah so here you can see that in the in the high misinformation density setting so here uh, so apparently we, we show like 21 percent of the search results we, we just played on a third part misinformation results and only like a three percent two is a correct information without and on the other hand in the uh, medium misinformation density one we showed a mixture of both so they are approximately significantly the same and uh, on the other hand in contrasting the uh, in the low misinformation density setting we will show like 22 percent of the search results that are correct information well only 2.6 are misinformation so eventually you can see that uh, by all definition the actual displayed misinformation density in the three setting was uh, about 90 percent 55 percent and 12 percent for the high medium and low setting so this is uh, showing you that you know our manipulation was uh, pretty successful and uh, so this manipulation and also consequently leads to user also you know, getting access to the misinformation search results much, much more in the high misinformation density setting. So you can see that on the left hand, we're showing the, the amount of clicks on the three types of search results, you know, for the three settings. And so users indeed have, uh, you know, clicked on the misinformation results more in the high misinformation density setting. So this is uh, ensures that we could be able to interpret all the search results due to the effects of the display misinformation density. And so, so here, so this is one of the key results. So the key results here showing us that actually the correctness of people to, to answer the factual questions before and after the you know, search session uh, actually has changed significantly. So you can see that before they do any search, uh, so actually the correctness of answering the questions doesn't have a significant difference uh, you know, among the three settings. But after the 10 minutes session, the correctness of answering the, the factual questions actually does have a significant difference. And particularly if we take a look at the, the improvements here, you can see that eventually you can see people wasn't only able to improve their correctness of answering the questions by 6% in the high misinformation density setting, which shows that they, they learn very limitedly. But in contrast, in the, uh, in the low misinformation density and medium setting, so they improve, uh, you know, comparably uh, with about, you know, uh, 16 to 7 percent uh, improvements. Yeah. So this is uh, showing that, you know, the high misinformation density setting will indeed uh, prevent people from answering the questions uh, correctly. Okay, so here we, we count the people's uh, responses are correct, uh, like a you know, if the, uh, so, so here, uh, well, so, so if we're showing a false statement, we count people's uh, answers as a strongly disagree or disagree as a correct. And so if we're showing a, a correct statement, we count the answers as a agree or strongly agree as a correct. And uh, other than that, uh, but however, we found that the perceived goodness of the system actually has no significant difference here. So if you take a look at the, their responses to the several questions here. So here we're asking questions like, uh, how confident are you regarding your answers to the post-test questions? And also, uh, do you think the search engine provided credible information for finishing the task? And some other things like, uh, whether do you feel the information provided by the search engine are useful? So you can see that for all these questions uh, in the three settings, there was actually no significant difference. So this is a uh, pretty concerning because it shows us Search engines does change the people's, uh, you know, perceptions about the factual information. However, people does not seem to perceive the goodness of the systems differently. So, yeah. But however, the the search behaviors does shows a difference here. So here you can see that. So we tested for many different types of search behaviors. So it's like the clicks, the number of search queries the length of the search queries and also the similarity between the uh, you know, per pairs. So all these behaviors actually shows a significant difference in the three settings here. So this is uh, showing that although the people doesn't be perceive the goodness of the system pretty differently, but we, we may potentially could be able to create behavioral metrics and helping us to tell the misinformation density level. Okay. So uh, this is a brief takeaway uh, you know about our study 
So number one, we find that uh, the misinformation density does not particularly affect people from learning the factual information correctly from search. However, we find that you know the searchers, uh, although the you know they didn't really perceive the goodness of the systems uh, differently, although they behaved differently. So this is a pretty uh, you know creating some challenges for evaluating the systems because traditionally we are relying a lot on you know the those things like uh, success or satisfaction. But all these are actually something you know uh, users could be able to perceive, but now the users may not be able to perceive the influence. They are under the influence of the misinformation. However, we may be able to design certain metrics, behavioral metrics, to tell the misinformation circulated out from the search. Okay. So this is a high-level summary about our study. Yeah, thank you very much. So I'm happy to take questions if you have time. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Are there questions to the author? Do, um, do you see this as, as a problem to be solved by search engines? And I mean, I know this is this obviously it's a big problem, so nobody's gonna have just the solution. But is this like is this something for search engines to address or uh, for other stakeholders? Yeah, this is a this is a something I think particularly you know search engines should be able to address. And particularly here, I want to point out that uh, you know it's probably the really the most concerning setting is the high misinformation density setting. So here, why I say this is uh, because it. So it seems like if you take a look at these two bars for lower and medium settings, so it seems like uh, people, our people, are users are pretty smart. They were still able to learn enough uh, from the, you know, if we show a mixture of correct and misinformation setting. Yeah, but you know, if the majority of the information was a uh, all misinformation, so that's a that's a setting actually you know uh, the users probably won't be able to tell so that's why i think you know search engines particularly should try to address this a high misinformation density setting yeah yeah so just, thanks yeah 